Hi guys, it's Kelly. I'm back again with another video. Today's video, we are going to be using Susie's Paintable Flower Sentiments. Um, so Susie has done a couple of these for Simon Says Stamp. They are, there's a huge line of them. I love them. They're super fun when you just want to sit down and color, which honestly was all I wanted to do. I also wanted to see if I could use these Altenew um, watercolor brush markers uh, with my alcohol markers. So um, that was kind of my game plan here, just, you know, playing around and, and um, you know, just coloring. It had been a minute since I had crafted. I had a lot of other things going on and I didn't really want to have to think about a design. I just wanted to make something pretty. So what I did was I started by putting down um, the uh, watercolor brush marker and then kind of laying down a layer of clean, clear water away from where the ink was as far as I wanted the ink to go out and then coming in with a paintbrush um, to and bringing the clean water to the marker. Um, that's usually how I feel I get the best results when I want just kind of like a washy, um, soft background. So originally I had just started with warm sunshine and that wasn't dark enough. So I brought in the, um, what is it? Autumn breeze? Autumn, bla autumn, autumn blaze. Yeah, see, I should look at the color names before I start talking, but I don't. We get what we get. So anyway, that's what I did the background with. I'm also going to paint the, um, the leaves and the flower using the same technique, putting it down where I want it to be the darkest and then blending it out with a um, paintbrush. This is a number two round brush from the Silver Brush Company, um, the, their black velvet line. So anyway, a um, couple of housekeeping things for us to talk about. Get some wine, get some coffee, maybe get a little snack. Um, because this is a longer video. It just, I wanted you to be able to see the whole thing and I wanted to be able to have a little bit of a chat with you guys. So previously we had talked about the um, YouTube, Facebook Lives. I definitely think we're going with YouTube at this point. Um, I am traveling this month. Um, so I probably won't start them until November because the next two um, Thursdays I will be out and about doing the things. One of the things I'll be doing is teaching um, for Neat and Tangled, which I'm so excited about. And I know some of you guys signed up for the class and I cannot wait to um, meet you in real life and hug you. Um, I hope you're touchy people because I'm totally a touchy person and I'm just going to want to hug the daylights out of you. Warning. There's your warning. Um, so then some of the other things that I wanted to talk about, which are... Um, and by the way, you'll notice that periodically I do speed up the process um, so you don't have to watch the same thing Um you know, we'd be here for an hour, honestly. That's probably about how long it took me to do the card. Um, but this, I'm doing it a second time because I was worried that my background would be too washed out once I started putting down the rest of the color. Um, and actually, it didn't turn out to be that way. And I'm not sure how I feel about the background because normally I would go blue and I wanted to try something different because I wanted my flower to be purple. And I thought, okay, well, purple's complement is yellow. And so if I do a yellow-orange background, like, I should be good. Um... I'm not sure how I feel about it. Tell me how you feel about it. Uh, anyway, back to the housekeeping things. So we talked about that, which is one of the things that I want to do. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is um, I field a lot of emails from people who want to partner um, with me on YouTube, um, who want me to either do reviews or um, want to send me product for me to use and sometimes they aren't always craft related. I don't know if this is like a side effect of how many followers I've gained. Um, they were coming in periodically kind of ever since I started my YouTube channel but it seems like lately there's just a ton more and you guys know me I'm a very real very honest person. I would never want to make any of you feel like I was trying to sell you something. Um, I'm never going to use anything on my channel that I don't love or you know, wouldn't use if YouTube didn't exist. Um, so I just kind of want to get your, I guess, um, the feel of that. So if like one of the companies that contacted me um, that wanted me to do a review, not, it wasn't a giveaway. It wasn't anything like that. It was, it was a review of their product. And, and when I replied back to them, I said, you understand that I would be doing an honest review of your product. Meaning if I don't like it, I'm going to tell them that I don't like it. It is what it is. Um, 
and they were like, yep, we totally get it. Um, so I'm kind of, I guess, on the fence about whether or not to do that. That one was a desk lamp. And while you're probably thinking like, what does a desk lamp have to do with crafting? Well, if you're somebody who wants to get into filming YouTube videos, a desk lamp actually means quite a bit. And this one was different because it had um, the ability for you to change the uh, tones on your light so you could make it warmer or cooler, which I thought, well, man, that would be helpful in filming. And so I had considered doing the review. But again, I don't want you guys to feel like I'm selling you something and I don't even know if it works because I didn't do, you know, I didn't do it. Um, but so that's one of the things. So how do you feel about reviews? Like, you know, reviewing products to see. And in, I mean, I do do them, I guess, ish. Because like when I did the one for, like when they sent me the all to new watercolor markers, like I gave you my honest opinion of what I thought of them when I used them. Um, and I think that that's super important. So yeah, want to know how you feel about reviews, especially about reviews on non-crafty items. So then the other thing is sponsored videos um, or like sp sponsorships. So this one is a little bit different because some of the companies that contact me, again, I'm not talking about craft companies. Um, I am talking about companies that are not craft necessarily related. This one, it is art, but it's very different than what we do um, here in the card making community. And that one was a watch company. And this man handcrafts watches, watch bands out of wood. And um, so I, they're beautiful, beautiful watches. They're, you know, $250, $300. Some of them are upwards of five. Stand by, we're going to talk about this card. So now you've seen I put all the purple down and I put it down where I wanted it to be the darkest. I'm a huge fan of color variation. I just think that it's so beautiful. And that's in real life. There's a lot of, you know, variation to flowers and things like that. So I decided I wanted to go back in with the, now all the purple's dry, P.S. So I went back in, um, the actual purple color is Midnight Violet. And then I went back in with Rubenite. And that's more of like a, a bright pink. And I found that it was a little bit harder to blend out. So I was layering the colors and it was kind of difficult for me to blend this out with my, um, with my paintbrush. With that said, I don't necessarily know that it's the markers. It could be the paper. These particular, the, the paintables, the ones that Susie does, are printed on Tim Holtz watercolor paper. And so I don't know if this is maybe typical of this paper because I don't use it. I use Canson watercolor paper. So I don't want to blame the markers when it could actually be the paper. And I don't mean that the paper is bad or that the markers are bad. I mean, they might just not work well together. Very much like people say Zig clean color markers, you get the best results if you use it on, um, oh, and now it's eluding me because I never use it, Bristol, Bristol paper. Um, so it was a little bit apparent to me with the Rubenite. It was extremely apparent to me when I tried to add the blue. Like you can see right here, like it's not even moving. It's pretty much a solid line. So I resulted, well, it resulted in me doing something that I normally do when I'm coloring with my zigs, which is I, well, I tried it again because, you know, I wanted to make sure, hey, you know, maybe it wasn't just this area of the paper and it wasn't. Um, so what I ended up doing was getting an acrylic block and then scribbling my watercolor brush marker onto the block and then adding the color in that way, just kind of like you would if you had a, you know, a liquid watercolor palette. Um, and so I just dropped it in that way and that did work much better. So it clearly isn't an ink thing. It may be in either the application of the um, straight out of the marker onto the paper or it might just be a paper thing. So just, you know, keep that in mind if you decide to do this um, particular, I guess, type of technique that that might be something you run into issues with. Anyway, back to this thing. So um, the the one that this would, this would watch company had contacted me and they were like, hey, we'd really love to send you a watch and we would love to do a giveaway and a discount code for your followers. So then that to me, I'm like, the watches are beautiful. They are. There's like I said, some are like between $250 to $500. They're gorgeous. And the fact that like one of you could win one, 
I was like, yeah, like, that's awesome. I would love to be anything that I can do, um, you know, to get you, you know, you guys something cool, whether that be a discount code or a giveaway or, you know, I'm totally down for that. That's awesome. Who doesn't like to win stuff? Um, but it just made me nervous with that whole, um, you know, disingenuous thing. I didn't want you guys to feel like, oh, well, she's trying to sell us this watch or she's trying to sell us this lamp or, you know, fill in the blank. And um, so it was just something that was important to me to kind of have a discussion about and get your guys' feeling about it. Um, to me, I was like, especially with the giveaway, like somebody's going to get something free. That's awesome. And if like you see a watch and you fall in love with it and you're like, oh, you know, my husband would love that or my, you know, my sister would love that and I can get you a discount code for it. Like, I feel like that's a win-win. Um, but maybe you don't. And if you don't, that's okay. Um, you know, we've kind of built this thing together and I think it's important, um, that we all kind of have our say about it. Um, so yeah, that's that. So please let me know how you feel about that, about how you feel about reviews, um, the giveaways, things like that. I would really genuinely like to know, um, and I don't want you to be, <laughs> I don't want you to be rude about it. Um, but I do want to know your opinion and it's okay if your opinion differs from mine. That's what makes life interesting. Um, so anywho, back to this card, we are, um, now everything is, is colored in. I loved, I love, love, love the way that the colors blended together, you know, the purples with the pinks with the blues. Um, I didn't love, love, love the leaves, which is why you saw me go back and add in the, um, hmm, I think it's the emerald color. I started with the limeade and there's three greens in this set. Yeah, it's the emerald. So I started with the, the limeade and then I went back in, re-wet the leaf and dropped in some emerald. Um, now when I do my Copic coloring, I'm only going to use violets on the flower but because Copics are transparent, you'll still be able to see that water coloring behind it, which I love and think is totally beautiful. It's just going to give the flower a ton of dimension. So I'm trying to think if anything interesting has happened to me lately. Um, I feel like I tell you guys nothing but spider stories because honestly, like that's just where I'm living right now. Um, so, okay. So today my Halloween costume came and my son's Halloween costume came. Um, I am going as Cleopatra. Thank you very much for your suggestions on my uh, previous video. And I found a dress, um, which is quite uh, revealing, if you will. But I plan on wearing a long sleeve black t-shirt underneath it, along with black pants, because I live in Ohio and the end of October is not typically warm, even if I was so inclined to wear a dress um, that had uh, a lace-up top, um, I, which I am not, especially not taking my child... Um, trigger treating. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to be cold. So anywho, my costume came, his costume came. We tried them on. It was a ton of fun. I am doing a fundraiser. We talked about my, we have talked about my youth group in the past, um, that we do through the police station. And, um, so that's grant funded and we have lost our funding. The state of Ohio decided that they were no longer going to offer that grant. Um, so it wasn't anything that we did to lose it. It's just not being offered. And so we started the youth group, um, we also do a thing called Coffee with the Cop for our senior citizens and some other community related events, you know, such as like reading books to the Cub Scouts and, and things like that. But anyway, so we're trying to keep the thing alive, pretty much what it comes down to. And so we're doing a Halloween fundraiser. We're having this party um, and we're going to have all kinds of like stations for the kids and we're doing a grilled cheese bar and a chocolate fountain and it's going to be super cute. I hope we can get people there and be able to keep this thing alive. But anyway... So obviously it's Halloween themed. I'm going to dress up. I'm doing the face painting actually for that particular event. And um, so I was like, I, I'm i just going to, um, I'm just going to, I was a princess last year. Uh, my, my peanut wanted to be a red dragon. And so I was a princess. He was a dragon. Makes sense, right? This year he's mummy. I'm Cleopatra. Um, but so I want, I was like, I should get my princess dress, make sure I get it washed because um, I'm just going to go to the fundraiser as a princess, it's much easier to dress up in that outfit um, than it is to dress up as Cleopatra. Cleopatra's got a few more accessories, and the princess dress basically is just the dress and a pair of shoes. So nothing more, you know, nothing any different than I would normally wear. Well, that's a lie. I haven't worn a dress in like years. <laughs> um, but, you know, if I was a dress wearer, um, it wouldn't be anything different than what you would normally wear. So, um, my house, I still have, don't have everything unpacked. 
Um, I just don't, I have more clothes than I have closet space for because it is a smaller house um, and just trying to figure out where everything is going to go. And one of those things that I haven't figured out yet is where to store my old Halloween costumes. Um, you know, peanuts don't so much matter because he's going to grow up and grow out of them. I'm buying all of mine at the same size. I'm pretty much, you know, God willing, will will be for the rest of forever. Um, and so I will be able to rewear them if I want to. Um, so I, the princess dress was on the floor in my bedroom and I went to pick up the princess dress and what is under the princess dress? Mm, come on, you know the answer. Of course you do. You're smart. You've been watching these videos. You already know what's under there. It's a big gigantic spider. Okay. It's a huge, huge spider. So I yell into the other room for um, Peanuts to bring me the spider spray because I have them strategically placed around my house. One of them is in the kitchen and I just replaced it. So there's two of them. One's empty, one's full. So I yell for him, make sure you bring the heavy one, bring the full one. So he's like, why is there a spider? Is there a spider? He thinks it's like the greatest thing since sliced bread. He brings it in. I go to spray the spider and as soon as I start spraying, it's like, poof, magic, it's gone. Disappears. Pulls a Houdini. And I'm like, what? I don't understand how they are so fast. Like, where do they go? They are not magic. They don't actually disappear. Okay? They just find a new space to occupy. So it was sitting in an area that was next to some scarves. Because while it is getting colder here, I haven't gotten to the scarf portion of the season yet. So I have to stick my hand into an area in which I know is occupied by a spider. So don't really like it. I'm already lightly sweating. My child is watching, um, you know, just, you know, where's the spider? Where'd he go? Where's the spider? Where'd he go? And I'm like, oh my, I don't know. I'm trying to find out without breaking out into hives. Like, can you give mommy a minute? So I nudge with my fingertip the scarf. The spider crawls out. I spray the daylights out of him. Him, the scarf, the whole the whole thing. I don't even care what's in the way. I'm just spraying, spraying, spraying. And he's completely coated in white and he's still moving. Like I want, I want an instant death spray. Like I want to spray it and then it's dead. That's what I want. I don't understand why the spider sprays work so slowly. I get that, you know, the science of it has to absorb into their bodies and all of that stuff. I don't, I don't want rational people. I don't want rational. I don't want logical. I want an instant death spray. That's what I want. So he eventually crawls into like a portion of the scarf where I assume he will curl up and die because um, he's coated and he's coated in poison. Okay, there he's not getting rid of it. So then Peanut and I come into the craft room. He wants to make a card, a Halloween card. Um, and so we do that. And then I was going to refill my coffee because you know how important coffee is. I mean, I have to survive life. And clearly I've already suffered through a traumatic event. Um, and so I go to walk out into the hallway. And again, there's another spider, another big one, another big black one. And I don't like it. Um, so anyway, just out of sheer reflex, because I don't want him to run, he starts running towards my bedroom, and I don't want him to make it into my bedroom, so I try to stomp on him, uh, which was crazy, because, the, I mean, I swear, you, he, those things are so big, they could take off your foot. Not that big. My girlfriend, Jeanette, hello, Jeanette, if you're watching this, um, she sent me a photo of this, this, um, spider that she had in her garage, and I don't know, is she from Texas, Arizona, California? She's from out that way. You know what I'm saying? The warmer places. And that thing cast a shadow, yo. I mean, I'm not, she sent me a, it was like a video of this thing in her garage. And then she sent me, or she posted another video to her story with her daughter who was trying to get one of them. I mean, they're just as big as your hand. Oh, for Lord's sake. Just as big as your hand. She had like a stick and a plastic container that she was trying to get him into the plastic container. So I don't know what she, I guess she was trying to save him, which kudos to her because I would have just died. I would have died immediately. And then my girlfriend Alyssa tagged me in one on, on Facebook that she found in her pantry. And she was like, washi tape for, for scale. And it was huge. And I was like, I wouldn't need a washi tape for scale. You could use my dead body for scale. Because if I opened up my pantry and saw that thing, I'd have died of a heart attack immediately. Just poof, dead right on the floor. But anyway, back to this other one that's running down the hallway. So I try to step on him. And I miss. Of course I miss. Why wouldn't I miss? And he makes it back behind my vanity. And the vanity has like a large birthday gift bag underneath it and a garbage bag next to it. Um, 
So I'm like, I can see kind of in there a little bit. And then I see he's like up underneath the garbage bag. Well, not underneath it completely, because obviously I can see him, but he's like crouched next to it. And so I'm like, I'm just going to start spraying in the hopes that I can chase him out the other way. And then, um, you know, I'll be able to spray him, stomp him, something. Somehow he'll be dead. Um, and so I start spraying and sure enough, he starts running the other way, which is wonderful. And then I have, I, do you all have Scentsy where you are? I got Scentsy. I love me some Scentsy. Right now my house smells like blueberry cheesecake. It's the best thing ever. Um, but anyway, it's basically a wax warmer. That's what Scentsy is if you've never heard of the Scentsy. Um, so I have like all these Scentsy things in this little basket on my floor. And this thing is like running behind the, the, the Scentsy. And I don't even care. Like I'm just hosing down the plastic containers with poison. I finally get him. He's coated. He's still moving. Um, Peanut comes out of the craft room and he's like, what is going on out here? And I'm like, there's another spider. And he's like, oh man, another one. I, yes. Oh man, another one. They're, Cause they're everywhere. Everywhere. Um, so anyway, he, like the spider comes around the corner, makes it out into the hallway. Like, why are they mobile for so long? Honestly, even like, even if it could just paralyze their legs, like maybe not kill them right away, not immediate death, but like just paralyze their legs so they can't just get around and you know where to find the carcass. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, he tries to like crawl up the wall and then like falls over on his back. And if I felt bad for things like that, I'm sure I have one follower who's a super nice lady and she's like think about the spider and the suffering and um I am sorry that the spider has to suffer but I am also sorry that I have to suffer with the traumatic experience of having to kill a spider that is like the size of a 50 cent piece okay okay just so we're clear on that um so anyway he finally makes out into the hallway and he is clearly dying and my son is like he's dead and I was like he ain't dead his legs are still out he ain't dead and he was like no no, I think he's dead. Mom, mom, I think he's dead. And I was like, when they curl up in a ball, child, that is when you know they're dead. And then, so we stand there and then sure enough, that happens. The ball effect happens. And he was like, hey, he is a ball. You were right. Guess he must be dead now. And he was, and I was excited about it. And I'm sorry if you think that makes me a bad person, but you know, I can't just be waking up with just spiders in my house and on me, in my bed, any of the places that I am, basically. So for those of you who have told me to get an exterminator, I did contact the rental property now that I appear to have um, new maintenance people. And he did come out and look and said that um, he will contact the, um, the guy he knows who does the extermination and they will have him come out and spray. So I'm very excited about that because the weather is turning here and I know when it gets warm, like they all just be trying to come up in my house and I can't have it because... Right now, they're trying, you know, they're all up in my house and it wasn't even cold outside. Know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, that was that was the spider adventures for today. Um, but I am super excited about um, this fundraiser and it's always so fun to like to dress up with Peanut and to be matchy-matchy and I'll be sad when he doesn't let me do it anymore. I really will be because um, right now he still thinks it's fun. <laughs> so um, anyway... For the card, like you can see, I did the drop shadow like I normally do. I did that with some brighter um, yellows and oranges. Again, I don't really know that I'm married to this color combination. I almost kind of wish I would have switched it and done like the purple in the background and the flower, the bright reddish orange. But I feel like I just did that. And that's something that like I always do. I don't frequently make purple or blue flowers. Um, and so I wanted something different. And since it was just kind of playtime for me, that's what I did. Um, for the smile, the you make me smile portion of it, I filled that in. And, um, so very quickly before the video ends, not because, I mean, it just kind of is what it is. Um, on Instagram, I was contacted by her name on Instagram is right brain artist. And she actually sent me, um, a request to see if I would do, um, you know, support her in this new hashtag that she's doing, which is called uh, the Art Kindness Challenge. And so basically, it's just, you know, making any kind of art, um, whether you're a card maker or, you know, poetry writer or wh whatever your version of art is, um, to be kind to somebody else. And I thought that it was a wonderful idea because I love, you know, I love that I'm a huge proponent of being kind to one another. It doesn't hurt anybody and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, to just be, you know, just be thoughtful of other people and, and to, you know, 
reach out with kindness. And if you're doing that, it will fill your heart as well. Um, so if you would like to join that, the hashtag on that is, you know, hashtag art kindness challenge, which is what I will be doing with this card when I share it on Instagram. Um, and that's it. That's that's pretty much the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I look forward to hearing your feedback and I will see you guys soon for the next video. Bye.